Hi, I'm Josh Burke from Red Jumpsuit Apparatus, and I'm going to show you my rig. All right, so to start, right here I have a PB6505 Plus. I took out the grill right here, me and Pops and my father kind of worked on this. We like to have fun with uh, building rigs and stuff like this. So I took out the grill right here because it would get a little hot with the the shock mounted foam and stuff. And then uh, Pops decided to have a little more fun than I was expecting and put an LED light. So as you can see, it's kind of just fading. It's pretty, it's pretty sweet, I guess you'd say. It's pretty flamboyant. Uh, it's badass, I really enjoy it. With my clean channel, which is this channel right here, I just basically have it set up to where it's like nice and bright and uh, really kind of pretty sounding. And actually half the clean film comes from the pedals, which we'll get to in a second. And then my dirty lead channel right here, you can see the pre is only at about five and a half. I don't really, I don't really crank the gain too much because it's already such a high gain head. It's 120 watts of fury. So I don't really, I don't really mess with it too much. I have some pedals to help me out with that for me for when I want to, you know, do some dive bombs. Inside drawer number one, we got some pedals. These are all going to a GCX audio switcher, all controlled by my Ground Control Pro right there. That way I don't have to tap dance around and select a bunch of pedals already pre-selected for each channel for each song. So right here we have a Boss DD3 digital delay. This is mainly just for my leads, uh, like lead soloing, just so I can get that quick like, meow, just trying to, trying to fill in the spaces a little bit, you know? And then we got the Black Label Chorus. I really only use this on Clean Channel because it really, really adds some fatness to the clean. And I really love how this sounds. It's fantastic. Digital Reverb, kind of the same deal with the digital delay. Just have something to kind of fill in the spaces. I find this is really clean, really nice. And then these two are my crankers right here for when I want to really boost up either volume, output, gain, whatever for any kind of shredding part in the, in the set. We've got the Wild Overdrive by MXR and the MXR Micro Amp. Both great pedals. And then the last but not least, this guy's really important and I love this, MXR Smart Gate. This is basically a noise suppressor, you know? It makes it so that if I stop in the middle of a solo, I'm not gonna go, you know, you don't, you don't have that ugly fizz and all that. So that really eliminates that. And that's drawer number one. Yay! And then drawer number two, we have the Voodoo Lab control switcher. This just makes it so that I can only press one thing, it'll activate the pedals and the different channels, so clean and dirty, etc., crunch, whatever. This is powering all the pedals, it's the MXR ISO brick. This thing's great, I freaking love it. So many outputs on the back, more than I even need. And then uh, a lazy guitarist best friend, the Digitech drop pedal. This basically, we play in the set where you go from drop C to drop B a lot, and uh, It'll be like one song of drop B, back to drop C, and then back to drop B. So I just find it so much easier to just make a channel with the drop pedal on, that way I don't have to change guitars all the time, you know? So that, that's worked out a lot, and there's no latency on this, really. It's, it's a great pedal. It doesn't affect the tone, really, so I really like that. And then here is a PB6505 uh, cab. Basic. Basic PB stock cab, nothing crazy done to it. It, uh, it just has balls, I gotta say. Yeah. So right here, I haven't named the channels yet, because I literally just got this in. It's a Ground Control Pro by Voodoo Lab. They've been a great help. You can call them anytime and they'll walk you through. And basically, each one of these represents a pedal. So right now, this is chorus and the uh, reverb for clean channels. So I go to clean, to rhythm, This basically makes it so that I don't have to tap dance around because all those all those light up little things like four, two, one, five, and six, I would have to hit right before playing a solo and then have to turn off getting back. So that was a real pain and I just I figured I'm over it, so I upgraded. <laughs> and then uh, this guy right here, this guy's a beast. This is the D20 uh, Giga Delay by Boss. Uh, really enjoy this thing. It has uh, multiple presets right here. My memory right now. So you can either do tap tempo or go to your presets. I have presets for this one's Guardian Angel, this is Cat and Mouse. This one's for a song I wrote, and this one's for leads, but I don't really use that now that I have them on the back. So yeah, it's just sweet. You can either do tap tempo or preset tempo, so it's exact. And then this is the TU3 chromatic tuner, industry standard. I feel like everyone and their mother has that tuner right now. So. Here we have guitars, of course. I only have three out this time, but Schechter has given us so many, it's ridiculous. They're such a, 
they're great to us. Right here, I have a Hellraiser. It's got Sustainiac, which is great. It uh, really gives you that evil sound, you know, without having to dig deep. This is just an EMG active pickup, super hot. Always ready to go. This is one of my mains for sure. I love this thing. Holds tuning great. Floyd Rose Bridge. Great for the dive bombs and all that. The main thing that drew me to this guitar, honestly, was the fact that I had a, I have another Hellraiser at home that's black. And uh, that's been my main for so long, but it's, it's toured so heavy that it's kind of been wearing down over the years. I mean, I've been touring this thing since 2011 and I absolutely love it. So I figured I might as well get a new one. And uh, I really like the Sustainiac, and it's kind of a relatively new thing that Schecter, not really new, but new at the time that Schecter had released. So I figured if I'm gonna get another one, I might as well get a different color, and I might as well get the Sustainiac option. So that's really all that drew it to me, is I wanted a very similar guitar to the one that I really, really love, but kind of wore, slightly wore down over time, that's all. These knobs, uh, this is Tone, this is uh, the bridge pickup. Or excuse me, this is the neck pickup and this is the bridge. Uh, basically, these are usually just about always up, honestly, because we're kind of a high gain band. We have the kind of metal tone, rock and roll tone. These right here are to activate the uh, Sustainiac. So this will turn it on and this will make it different pitches. So if it, I usually have it on the really high pitch because it's really evil sounding. It's super sweet. I really enjoy that. And then this is just a toggle switch. Bridge to neck pickup, typical. Sweet picks right here chunkiness right there. So this is the war horse of this tour for sure. This is a matte black uh, C C1 custom. And we got the Jimmy clip right there. I want to shout out to my boy Jim Robbins. You're the man dude. This thing freaking rules. It basically, uh, I might as well tell the function of it. Basically if you're doing any kind of chunkiness with a really thick string, for example, like if I'm going to the, and I need it to mute right away, Anytime you mute it, even if it's on a record or anything, it'll kind of have that hum still. You'll be like, dun, you know, just even for a millisecond. I can't really describe it. It's hard to hear, but it's definitely there. This completely makes it so that the second you want the thing to choke and just stop, it'll just immediately stop, like no matter what. So this is a great invention. A lot of people back in the day used to use tape. I know in the studio, a lot of people, we went to Dave's, Dave Bendis, and uh, you know, world-class studio and stuff, and we were using tape because we had nothing like this. It's either tape or foam. I see foam a lot. This is the way to go. I know Lee, uh, Lee from Bring Me the Horizon uses this now. And uh, yeah, shout out to Jim. Fantastic invention. But this is the War Horse, horse right here. These are just uh, Schecter Custom Shop pickups. They're passive, but they sound so aggressive and just so sweet. Uh, if anything, this guitar, the reason why I'm mainly using this guitar is because this one sounds the most like the record. This one's just really sounds just like it. So that's why I love it. It's no batteries, obviously, because it's passive, and I love that. Right here we have some locking tuners. These are great by Schecter right here. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't let it tune very often. There's no fluctuation, you know? Now, on these, uh, I'm using a Diodario 12 gauge. I just really like how they feel. Plain and simple, to be honest with you. And it doesn't hurt that we have an endorsement with them, so that's great. This guy right here is probably one of the prettier guitars I own. He's been toured on a lot back in the day. Solo Custom 3. I got this back in uh, 2012, I believe. Maybe 2013. Uh, locking tuners, just like the other one. As similar as this guitar is to the Hellraiser model I have right there, in matte black, it sounds so different. This one is much more, I would say retro sounding, if anything. It sounds definitely more old school, kind of like, I don't know how to describe it. Uh, I don't know, just not as metal. But it, it still works, that's, it, that's not a bad thing. It has its own brightness to it. But yeah, this thing sounds freaking great. I love this thing. Really pretty, gold hardware. Deardario 12 gauges, once again. I do, it's actually the first night of tour, so I don't know, that, that Hellraiser matte black guitar right there was just doing it for me tonight. So I just did the whole set with that. It's kind of, it's kind of whatever I feel, you know? If I feel like picking this up, or if I feel like playing the whole set with this, I'm pretty inconsistent. It depends on my mood, I guess. I guess you could say I'll probably be using the matte one most of the tour, just because, like I said, it sounds so similar to the record. Like, it's got that thing to it. It's got that dark, it's a really dark sound, pretty aggressive, but 
not overloaded with like hotness, not too much hotness. You know, I don't like it when it pickups too hot and gives me any kind of feedback. I hate that. So it's like, it's the perfect one. This is definitely a little bit uh, brighter and a little bit less less brutal. So well, thanks for checking out all the red jumpsuit gear. I know Josh is super excited about all his new great stuff. And you can check us out on like uh, facebook.com slash redjumpsuit or redjumpsuit.com.